Never mind. My audio wasn't on. No wonder. No wonder. My mic was not on. All you got was some great background music. Okay. Well, as I was saying, for the first couple minutes of the stream, it's late here on the East Coast. I felt like this is the perfect time for some horror stories right before at least I go to bed. So I thought I'd jump into this. It's a free-to-play game on Steam. I'm going to jump at any free-to-play game, hopefully. These are working. Oh, there we go. One click then. There's my answer. And I don't know what these are going to be like. I don't know if they're going to be any good. I'm hoping they're good. But uh, let me know which one of these eight we're going to start with. Oh, and the background music I hope will fit. I have a whole playlist set of, uh, of Miu from YouTube, he's great, uh, does a lot of really good background horror music, so I feel like we're in, we're in a good spot to hopefully get a ton of creeping out, I'm hoping. I kind of want to start with the Crystal Skull just so we can get to the sequel. Because if there's a sequel, the first one. First one better be at least somewhat good. But knowing sequels, they're never as good as the first one. I'm going to start with that. Okay. So. Our first story is the Crystal Skull. And these are... No, I've never heard of this game either. I found it when I was looking for just free games. And it was up there with uh, Kyle is Famous. And I'm a horror fanatic. So if I see something that's one interactive, that's a, essentially choose your own adventure, with horror involved, I'm going to jump at it. So, we got a couple of... Uh, we're going to go through this and chat you can help me make my decisions here but uh let's let's jump into this you're a king who is loved by his people you have a serious problem though your only child juliana has an in incurable disease and she is dying you hear about a crystal skull which can cure illness and let people have visions it is brought to your brought to your palace from the continent of america wow so we're not in America, apparently, in this story. But your man warns you that the skull might be cursed. Will the crystal skull bring health to the princess or doom? Let's play. Crystal skull. Oh, I got press keys. Okay. Being a king is hard. Being a good king is even harder. You know this well as the sole ruler of a European kingdom in the age when America is discovered. It has been 25 years since you ascended the throne. Your subjects ain't. Your subjects are content with your rule. Your country is in peace, and the people are wealthy. But there is something wrong with your life. Okay, you can barely hear me. I'll bring up the volume. Okay, how am I now? How am I now? Hopefully I should be coming in loud and clear. Even though I'll move my mic up a bit then as well. Maybe a bit more? I'll just go bring it up all the way then. Bring it up all the way. And just in case, I don't know how... Is the... Uh, is the music drowning me out because if so I'll down that as well better good awesome so okay next Oop. your daughter Juliana is ill 
She's only 18 years old, and she has got an illness that nobody could cure yet. That could be anything. Uh, princess is dying, and she is your only child and heir to the throne. Every doctor you can find tried to cure her. You have tried almost everything. Almost. You have been informed about a miraculous artifact unearthed in, unearthed in the continent of America. It is a human skull made of crystal. It amazes the scholars, because no method is known to carve up such an excellent shape of a skull out of crystal. This skull doesn't belong to the world that you know, but to an ancient civilization that has been lost. But what amazes the scholars is not just the impossible creation. The skull is told to bring miracles to whom touches it with their bare hands. So we gotta, we gotta put our hands all over the skull. We gotta feel it up. Some people tell that they saw visions from the future. Some tell that they saw how the human race has originated, and some tell that the skull can cure their illness. Those couldn't be cured with the medication available to their era. Naturally, you ordered your best men to bring the miraculous skull to the palace. It's midnight now. You are in Juliana's chamber. She's lying in her bed holding her hand as holding your hand as you sit by her bed. No candles are lit inside. Full moon enlightens the princess's chambers, shining on her long blonde hair and blue eyes. Man, we're getting real descriptive here. I like it. She is too weak. Her skin is pale. She has under eye bags showing her illness. You already suffered the loss of your wife ten years ago. Dear Lord. Now you can't stand seeing your only daughter slowly die. Man, this... Mm. Okay. Okay, we're gonna... We're gonna do it this way. Juliana asks you, with a, asks you with a soft voice, Father, am I going to die? So, uh, I won't allow that, or eventually yes. I mean, if we want to get technical about it, yeah, she's going to die at some point. But, I feel like, I know what I'd pick if I'm just doing this on my own. But, of course, I need the I need the opinion in the chat here of one or two. At least this makes it easy, too. All you gotta do is one or two. I'm an asshole, so I would absolutely go two. I mean, I feel like... I feel like that's, that is a bit of a dick move, but you know what? We'll go with two. We'll go with two. Let's see. She sighs. It is so sad. I am a princess with ambitions. Ambitions to become a ruler. And it... Well, that's interesting ambitions. And it is certainly not about personal gain. Okay. There you, she cleared it up. I want to continue what you do. I want to be a fair ruler and make our people happy. She continues. But I think this is life. Death conquers all. Hmm. We're getting very dark here. The door of the chamber is knocked on. The servants generally don't disturb the royal, fam royal family members at night, so it must be something important. Come on in! A prudent boy, one of your... A prudent boy, one of your servants, gets inside the chamber with politeness. He looks at you and says, Your Majesty, the artifact has been brought. You had been waiting for this moment for a long time. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna take authoritative control on this one and say two on this. We're not just we gotta be at least a little bit kind since we since we kind of bluntly said, hey, you know you're gonna die. After you kiss Juliana's forehead and say, I will come back, she brings your hand to her pale lips and kisses it. Then you leave Juliana alone in her chamber. Okay. At the exit of Juliana's chamber, you see Sir William, one of the knights those were one of the knights those were appointed with the task of bringing the ancient skull. As you can tell, this is not an 
English speaking first language development company. The sentences are not the greatest of English, but hey, I'll give it to him. So far, they did a pretty solid job. He is a strong man with black hair and a round beard. He wears gloves and holds a bag. Your Majesty, he says and kneels before you. That signal to him to stand. Let's go to my study chamber. Sir William follows you as you walk to your study chamber. The chamber is well lit with silver candelabrums? Candelabrums. That's how you spell candelabrums? I thought it was two words. I did not know candelabrums was one word. I legitimately thought it was candelabrums. Two several. You learn something new every day, even at 9.16 in the afternoon. Or at night, I should say that. All the furniture, all the furniture is classy. It is a king's study room after all. There is only one chair. It is for you. You sit on it. Okay. Sir William stands by you and slowly pulls the artifact from his bag. You push the books on the study desk to open space for the artifact. Here it is, he says, and gently puts the crystal skull on the study desk. That was very convenient. That musical change. I am happy with that. According to Google, it is one word. Hey, they did a good job. I did not know candelabrums was one word. The skull is truly a masterpiece. If it is crafted by humans, all the detail... It's truly a masterpiece if it is crafted by humans. All the details of a human skull are imprinted with care on raw crystal. Lights coming from the candles are... Ref are refracted inside the skull, gaining various colors of a rainbow. It's magnificent, but you sense something sinister, something that doesn't belong to our world. So do we straight up touch it, or do we ask the knights if they touch the skull? Because remember, this thing can grant wishes, to make miracles happen, apparently. At least from what we've heard. And they may have had to touch it. They may have had to touch the skull in order to grab it. I assume they're wearing gloves. So. So one or two in the chat. Do it. <laughs> do it. Just do it. I mean, it, it's probably, probably the, uh, I wouldn't say the smartest choice. Could we gonna touch the skull? We're gonna, we're gonna, oh, I wasn't tabbed in there. There we go. As you are about to touch the skull, Sir William holds your hand and prevents you from touching the skull. Woo! Sir William's stopping us. He's saying, no, no, sir, do not touch that skull. I want to know why. Why is William stopping us now? Remember in horror stories, it ain't about smart. It's about dumb luck. Eh, to some extent. Hey, to some extent, you need some, you need some intelligence. You need some intelligence. Your Majesty. I think I need to tell you something about the skull before you touch it. Ooh, what you know, Bill. The day we were about to leave, a native man came to us. He looked like the chief of his tribe. Oh, a Native American. He knew little of our language, but he shouted some words that we could understand. Cursed! No touch! Well, I assume he said don't touch, but you know. He yelled it out. So we haven't touched the skull with our bare hands again. Again? Wait, again? So did they already touch it once? I don't think Bill's telling us everything. I know that our princess needs to find a cure. I also know that we received reliable information about the magical powers of the skull when it comes to incurable diseases. But your majesty... 
I have got a very bad feeling about this skull. I believe that the wise decision is to throw this skull to the sea. Mm hmm. Our first choice is I can't let Juliana die. She will touch the skull. Or, I trust your insight. Let's do it. I mean, we're, we're sitting here and... Like, there's no cure to this disease that she has. I feel... I feel like we have to just just kind of have to uh we have to say one i feel like we have to say one here because why why on earth why on earth would we just not do this we went through all that trouble to get this i feel like it has to we have to ever do it. The knight sighs, as you wish, your majesty. But if you are going to bring the skull to her, I wish you would wear gloves. Do we wear the gloves or not now? That's... Like, I... I legitimately don't know what's going to happen if we touch this. <laughs> At this point, like, we've now got Native Americans saying, don't touch it. It's cursed. We have what I guess is to be believed our most trustworthy knight telling us to not touch it with our bare hands and to wear gloves if we are going to have our daughter touch it. Uh, one or two in the chat. One or two in the chat. Trust the natives? So, wear the gloves? Okay. We're gonna wear these gloves. We, we, we trust the natives when it comes to curses. We'll wear those gloves. You look for gloves around the study chamber. Sir William pulls his own gloves off. I think you wish Juliana to touch the skull as soon as possible. Let's not wait for servants to find your gloves, he says, and gives you them. You wear the gloves and hold the crystal skull with your covered hands. Let me bring the skull to Juliana. You thank Sir William for his services and let him go. You carry the skull to Juliana's chamber. You enter her chamber and see that she hasn't slept yet. She rises up and sits on her bed. She looks at the skull and all. It looks marvelous and scary, she says. You approach Juliana and let her touch the skull. <laughs> Crystal skull, where's Indiana Jones? Uh, we, we got there before Indy did. And there's like seven of them in there. I like the grainy feature in the backdrop on this. I'm just noticing it now. And I really like that. As Juliana touches the skull, she closes her eyes and doesn't react to anything in, existential wor in the existential world. You understand that she is having a vision. Oh, I think we broke her. I think she just entered the multiverse. Yes. After ten seconds, she opens her eyes with a gasp. I saw things. I don't know how to describe them. They were pitch black creatures. Oh shit. So ugly. Their eyes, they were red as flames and they stared at me. She starts to cry. Please keep this thing away from me. Please, I want to be alone. Oh shit, what did we do? So you decide to keep the skull in your study room and let your daughter sleep. Oh, Lord. I am so happy we didn't touch that skull now. I'm very sad that we let her touch it. After this tiring day, you go to your chamber. There are no guards at the door. You just trust everybody in the palace. You are a loved king. The furniture is luxurious in this chamber. The furniture is luxurious in this chamber, too. 
You take a glance at your reflection in the mirror. Hooey. Do we examine ourselves or just sleep? We haven't touched the skull yet. Ooh. One or two. Do we examine ourselves in the mirror or just go to bed? Oh, one. Okay, here we go. You take pride in how you look. You are a middle-aged man, but you look—you still look as handsome as you were young. Your looks are an important factor that makes you a charismatic leader, besides being fair and wise. Okay, so we look pretty damn good. Go to sleep. You wear your nightgown. What? What? Okay, we're, we're a king and this is like medieval times. Okay. And get in your bed. It is a bed for two. But you haven't slept with anyone since your wife passed away. So it's been ten years since we got any. You have a secret that you keep from everyone. Sometimes you hug the second pillow in your bed as if it was someone you love. You do this since your childhood. Nobody needs to know it. Okay? Doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. Father? You wake up to Juliana's voice. She gently holds your shoulder. You look at her. She has a happy smile on her face. Oh, God, and the music. Oh, my music is just... I will say it's running perfect with this. Uh, if you guys can't hear the music, let me know. I'll turn it up just a tad bit. Uh, her skin is not pale, but saturated with life. She no longer has bags under her eyes. I feel wonderful. She takes a few steps back and starts dancing. You laugh with happiness. Stand up and hug her. Well, everything seemed to do just fine. Okay. Juliana walks in the corridors of, your, of the palace, dancing and laughing. You and the people of the palace are very happy to see her this way. She used to be like a ghost before. You plan a feast and invite all the lords of the kingdom. A few days later, every lord arrives to the capital city to celebrate the health of the princess. The music's good? Good to hear. I'm happy about that. At the feast, Juliana is the center of everybody's attention. She talks with everyone, joyfully makes jokes, makes people laugh. When the feast is over and it's midnight, everybody goes to the chambers reserved for them. You accompany Juliana to her chamber. You put a kiss on her forehead before letting her sleep. Then you go to your own chamber and fall asleep in peace. Man, everything... Everything turned out great. I spoke too soon, didn't I? You wake up to the sound of the knocking on your chamber door. It's still night. You wonder who dared to wake you up at this hour. I, I feel like I'm mad now. Oh man, now we gotta open the door, right? I feel like we got to. I'll, t I'll take info in the chat, but I feel like we're opening this damn door. I don't know who who dares knock on Who is that rapping, rapping at my chamber door? This is gonna be good because we're gonna hop right into Crystal Skull 2 after this is over. Okay, one. It's the same Bruined boy who had informed you about the arrival of the Skull. Your Majesty... I am deeply sorry for disturbing you at this hour, but there is something wrong. There are laughing sounds coming from the princess's chamber. It's her voice, but it doesn't sound normal. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, I'm going to do one thing here before we uh, continue. I want to... Uh... Move something real quick up. You're going to see some live editing here, folks. Actually, this is fun going up right over my head. Live editing. Boom. Easy live editing. <laughs> She's a demon. Kill her with fire. Jaren, I think you, you nailed the... Uh, you nailed, nailed it around the head. Is There we go. Now I've fixed what I needed to fix.
I think I think you nailed it. You you nailed it right on the head with her being a demon. Oh, one or two. I, I didn't even notice there was a one or two. I was ready to just keep going. Uh, let me check it, or I'm sure it's nothing important. I, I think we all know which one we're going with here. Ooh. Yeah, I figured, John, you're going one. You walk to Juliana's chamber. Like the servant said, hysterical laughters come from inside. You decide to enter. You see Juliana at the balcony of her chamber, facing back, facing back towards you. She laughs under the pale moon. Oh, God. I'm going to lead this king to his death, ain't I? You're probably going to. I will say, the music is adding a great atmosphere to this, but I am really enjoying the way they, how descriptive they have gotten with this. Because it is painting a beautiful picture in my head. You approach her and put your hand on her shoulder. She turns back to you. Her face is normal, smiling. Just when you were going to ask if she is okay, she responds. I know it looks funny, father, but I am fine. Please leave me alone. She says. I think she just read our damn mind. She stops laughing gets in her bed with a smile on her face. You decide to leave her alone. You go back to your chamber. You can't sleep. You feel something is wrong. So wrong. The door of your chamber opens. There is only one person who is allowed to enter without knocking on the king's door. So you understand that it is Juliana who entered. Like you guessed, you see your daughter's silhouette. She closes the door and approaches you with a smile on her face. <laughs> you gonna die! Juliana? She leans down to you, gently pulls the other pillow that you don't use. Juliana, it's time. She says, Pushing the pillow on your face. That vocal work was terrible. You struggle, but whoever or whatever is trying to kill you is too strong. The, the king is dead. Lord, left the king. She, sa she shouts. Why is your own daughter committing practice, practicide slash regicide and referring herself as king rather than queen? That doesn't make sense at all. That is the end of your reign and life. The end. There are three endings to that. Wow. I think what we're going to do, though, we're not going to run through all three of those endings just yet. I want to get through, like, every first ending of at least most if not all of these uh because that is that is great i really like that uh that is quite an interesting one what a uh first one that was so the crystal skull ended initially with our boy the king uh dying at the hands of his daughter who became a demon. I think we gotta know what happens in the sequel. This time you are not a king, but a libertine billionaire in the modern age. Woohoo, money. Historical artifacts are one of your vices. A marvelous crystal skull is brought to your mansion. And the interesting part is, you can hear the skull's voice in your mind and can talk with it. <laughs> oh, this is going to be real good. We can talk 
to the skull. We can literally talk to the skull. That is absolutely amazing. Going where I want it to. Uh, yeah, no, we're fine. I'm not gonna deal with it. Just transition real quick, just in case. Here we go. I was just double checking the the bar at the top. For some reason, it looked off to me. All right, here we go. Here's what I really wanted, but I can get it the right way I want it. Boom! There we go. Touching. Now we're set. And some new tunes. Okay. So, a marvelous curse sky. It says that it will bring you joys no mortal can ever reach, but it demands something first. Crystal Skull. The sequel. You consider yourself a lucky man. You are a European billionaire in his 30s, dear lord. Don't remind me. I've only got three years left. <laughs> After a... Well, almost three years left. i got four years left so far. After the recent death of your father, your mother died a long time ago, dear... You don't have to rub it in. You inherited the family manor and company. You're also single... And handsome. Yes, you are a lucky son of a bitch. As a libertine, you have indulged in many vices, those we can't mention because of censorship. You have never harmed anyone against her will, though. So, uh, we do the dirty. But all these wild experiences couldn't slake your thoughts couldn't slack yeah slack your thirst you want to taste what was not tasted before conquer the unconquered nowadays you have a new interest historical artifacts prehistoric vases no you don't like boring things you own alexander the great sword which he used for cutting the gordian knot you didn't obtain it in in legal ways but that doesn't matter to you. And you seek more. So we, we like ourselves some uh, old fancy stuff. It's a summer night. Your smartwatch shows a 111. All your six servants are asleep in their rooms. Wow, we got six servants. That's the way you like it. You don't like being disturbed by their presence at night. You want to be alone at this hour while enjoying your malt whiskey. I don't drink, not, not going to enjoy the whiskey, sorry. You are in front of your laptop, hey, in your study room, checking social media. Yes, even billionaires do it. Yeah, we know. With a glass of whiskey and Cuban cigars. You remember that you haven't checked your emails in a while. There are six unread emails. Four of them are business mails, obviously. One of them is from your friend Phil, another rich man. You will love this, is the subject of the mail. The last one is from Bill, an artifact smuggler. Crystal Skull, he says in the subject. So, uh, which one are we reading first? Are we going to read the business emails? Uh, read Phil's email? Or are we going to read Bill's email? I kind of want to know what Phil said <laughs> the most here right now. Because uh, when you put all caps and you say, you will love this. I mean, interesting. Business first? Okay. These mails are from your employees. They inform you the painkiller medicine that your yeah, enterprise produces. Can be sold in, can't be sold in Sweden anymore. 
You're too drunk to handle the situation right now. This is med this medicine ban is not such an important loss for your enterprise anyways. You produce and export many other products. We fancy. We got two left. Fills or bills. I don't feel like this track really fits where we're going right now. Let's go, uh... uh let's go with this one. I think this works pretty well. Go on, Phil! Okay. The mail consists of a single image. It belongs to a creepy clown with sharp teeth and a hideous smile on his white face. Low-key lighting and the blood that spills from his mouth makes the image even more disturbing. You have a phobia of clowns, and Phil knows it very well. Well, I think I know what we're replying to Phil. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, fun fact, I'm not the biggest fan of clowns. I don't 110%, like, if I see one, I'm gonna freak the fuck out and constantly but uh i just i don't like him i don't like him all that much even though i love the joker to death i'm not a big clown guy that's just a fun fact and uh yeah john we're going one here so uh it leaves one email to read let's find out what bill's got for us whoops i have to show you this bill says this skull is made of pure crystal, and nobody knows where it is from. You won't believe its story. He has taken a photo of the skull with his phone. The fluorescent light in his room is weak, but somehow the skull is clearly visible in the photo. Despite the quality of the photo, the skull looks amazing with its shiny material. You've seen enough crystal jewelry to know that Bill isn't showing something fake here. Let me bring it to your place. What will be your response? So what are we going with here? Are we uh, are we extremely interested in the skull right away? Because uh, seems legit this uh, crystally skull that Bill's got here. Looks like uh, yeah, Phil's gonna bring it. And now we wait. You turn your computer off. Start waiting for Bill. Fifteen minutes later, your phone rings. The melody is a motto mino by Pink Martini. I don't know what that is. Death to the main character. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. Uh, it shows Bill as the caller. Answer the call. Hello? You pick up your phone and answer the call. Hey, it's me, dude. Bill says on the phone. Looking out the window, you see him standing in the doorway. I didn't want to wake your people up. Open the door for me, will you? You leave your study room, descend the stairs. Your study room is at the third floor of the mansion. You and open the huge wooden door of the mansion. Bill smiles at you. It's nice to see you again. I'm sure you'll love what I've got here. He shows you his full Kihaki sports bag. Let's move on to the study room. You climb up the stairs to your study room as Bill follows you. After you reach there, Bill closes the door of the study room and pulls the artifact from his bag. Bill puts the crystal skull on your desk with a confident smile on his face. Oh God, you have seen many things in your life, but this skull is one of the prettiest. One of the prettiest ever. Oh, khaki and pants. I feel stupid. I've actually never really known how khaki is spelled either. I'm learning all kinds of things today. You'd think as a writer I would know how to spell khaki. Uh, let's see. The skull is made of pure crystal and all the details of a human skull is imprinted. It refracts the light of the room with elegance. 
Bill is ready to answer your questions. Okay, what well first? How did you obtain it? Who crafted this? And when? How much do you want? Thanks, but I'm not buying it. What are we going with first? I wonder if Bill even knows the answer to number two. That's the real question. <laughs> like, does he actually know number two? Because number one is going to be a very interesting story to tell, I'm sure. Uh, number three... Number three is probably going to be a good chunk of change. So number two? I have no... He doesn't even know. Of course, Phil. No, not Phil. This is Bill. Of course, Bill doesn't know. I have no idea. The skull is found in a... The skull is found in a bag in the sea. It resembles nothing I've ever sold or heard. I didn't know that it was possible to craft a baby like this. Look at it. Isn't it wonderful? Bill is ready to answer your questions. One or three or five, of course. We don't have to buy it. They still got, yeah, they still got that grainy texture in the background. Good, good, good. I was a little worried that it wasn't in this one, but now I'm seeing it. I'm happy. I'm quite seeing it. No, you're buying it. <laughs> I was afraid you'd ask that, because you won't believe me. After a long pause, Bill continues. It is it was brought to me by a driver who dived in by a diver who dived in the seashore. He said that he started hearing voices inside his head when he was in when he was in the sea. Find me, the voices told him. He swam to the direction of the voices and found a floating bag. It is strange you'd ex Expect a skull like this should have been sunk, but it was floating, and the rest of the story is even stranger. Oh? After he found the bag with the skull, he continued hearing voices. They gave him my phone. They gave him my phone number. He told me he would never do any illegal shit like giving a historical artifact to a smuggler, but he couldn't disobey the voices. And you won't believe me, but when I touched the skull, I began seeing shit. Oh man, Bill touched it. Bill touched it. Bill, you dumb ass. Why'd you touch it? Beautiful shit. I saw myself fucking two hot bitches. Can you believe it, dude? Yeah, I figured, I figured, John, you were going to pick that one. Bullshit. I don't expect you to believe me anyway. But you should touch the skull, too. Come on. Touch it. Oh, you saying we don't touch it? Jaren. Really? Yep. And of course he back. He says, "Nope, no, nope, we're touching it." Of course, right when I notice, of course you back out and touch it. Well, let's touch it. You approach the skull, and touch it with your bare hand, and the vision starts. <laughs> you are something magnificent. Definitely not a human anymore. Something way beyond human. A cosmic entity. You are omnificent. I feel like that. Omnificent? I think that's supposed to be omnificent. That's at least the way I've heard it pronounced. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You can see and hear the whole universe. Death to the main character. No secrets are kept from you. You are inside the every mind that exists on earth. Okay, you're inside every mind that exists on earth. Now you see yourself in the form of a human. You are at the top of a hill, under the sun. You are not alone. There are millions of people around the hill. They are all naked and on their knees. They chant your name. You know they are yours. And the vision ends. It feels like you hit the ground when you were flying high in the heavens. You find yourself touching the skull, and Bill is looking at you with a smile. 
told you, he said. The skull is magical. Bill is ready to answer your questions. I got a feeling we are uh, hitting that number three. He's going to wait. I'm just going to wait to see it in the chat because I know it's coming up. Three, then four. I don't even... No, yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably will have to hit four. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. One billion. No, no, one million pounds. I got my commas mixed up there. Normally, I would sell, normally I would sell by auction. But really, I don't want to keep this thing. I feel like I can lose it if I keep it for more than I feel like I'd lose it if I keep it for more than a few hours. You had bought much more boring things for higher prices. Here we go. That's enough. I want to buy it. Bill smiles. Great. Make the money transfer and the skull is yours. Transfer one billion pounds to Bill. I don't know. Was that pounds or euros? I don't even know. I think it was, I think it was pounds. I'm hoping it was pounds. Maybe it was euros. You open your computer once again. Of course, you don't use banks for illegal stuff like that. Instead, you open your Bitcoin account. Obviously, euros. Yeah, I thought so. After looking at it a second time, I thought so. <laughs> With a few clicks, all the money is sent to the smuggler. It doesn't take long for Bill's phone to beep. He looks up to his phone, smiles. It was a good deal, dude. He waves at you while leaving the study room with his empty bag. If you want anything, you know who to call. Ghostbusters. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Soon you hear Bill's car leaving the mansion. Now you are alone in your study room with the skull. We about to touch that skull again. This is going to be one hell of a trip. As you touch the skull, something strange happens. All the lights in the room go off. All the crystals, all the crystal starts to shine, but the crystal starts to shine and emit white light illuminating the room. You hear a voice, male or female, you can't figure it out in your mind. Uh, how am I going to do this? Greetings, mortal. You feel the skull gazes into your soul. Um, I can hear you. No. I can hear you. Talk to me. Who are you? What are you? Are you stuck in this crystal skull? Do you know who I am? So which one are we going with? Oh, we're going with two first. Okay. What are you? Wrong question. It's who, not what. Mm. This thing got angry. The skull waits for your questions. Well, um, I take it we gotta ask... Who are you? Take it, that's why we're going now. I've got many names. Exorcil is one of them. Some perceive me as an angel. Some as a demon. Some as a god. The truth is, there are forces in the universe, inconceivable to tiny human mind, and I am one of those forces. For ages, I have been worshipped by mankind and the entities unknown to your world, but I am forgotten. I am preparing my return. 
Oh man, I think we got an elder god. A god? I don't believe in you. Oh. So which one are we going with there? One or two? And really, I think either one of those is a very correct answer to this whole situation. Going with one? Let's do it. <laughs> I don't need your belief. You are rich, but still the mortal. I have been worshipped millennia ago before you were born. I will still exist after your death. Your lifespan is my minute. In fact, I could kill you right now, like a worthless insect. Do you want to die? Piss <laughs> him off. So... Oh, we're an egotistical maniac. Suddenly you feel a tremendous agony in your whole body. It feels like a giant is stepping on you, as if you were a little insect. You were also unable to breathe. You fall on the carpet with unbearable pain. You squirm and try to catch your breath. But it chokes you. After 15 seconds that felt like an eternity, it releases you. And you hear the words in your mind. I am a merciful God. He called your bluff. He called your bluff perfectly fine. <coughs> that voice is... I will say it doesn't take much out of me, but man, it's a weird one. Uh, I, I, we gotta ask, are you stuck in the crystal skull? I see... Hear and know everything. My existence is far beyond this material skull. CDW for voice acting. My voice acting skills are not great. They are, they are not great. And welcome anybody just coming into the stream. Hopefully you enjoy some uh, late night horror stories. The skull waits for your, for your questions. We only got one more question to ask. Do you know who I am? Yes, I know who you are. Like I know everything else. You are a billionaire who is afraid of clowns and hasn't earned his fortune with his hard work. You want to taste all kinds of joy on earth. I can give you what you want. It was not a coincidence that the Divan Bill brought me to you. Yes, I can give you what you want. Okay. So, uh, our buddy here, I already forgot his name and I apologize to him, uh, is going to give us everything we want. Sounds good to me. What will you give me? You are stuck in a mortal human body. You can be a cosmic entity like me. You will know everything. Be ageless, immortal, and worshipped. But I demand something first. Okay. Let's go away for your questions. What do you demand? Ancient civilizations always offered me something valuable. They sacrificed human lives for me. I want you to kill someone innocent. Ooh -wee. No way or I am interested. Do we take do we take the offer and become essentially a god? By killing an innocent human being. Or do we say, no way man. I may be a billionaire. Kind of scumbag asshole. But I am not going to kill anybody innocent. We got one vote for two already. And Jarn, you, you just won. You just don't like, you, you just don't like the main characters, man. So. We'll go ahead and, uh. We'll go ahead and say we're interested. Oh lord. 
Okay. I know someone who you can kill. Oh, Jesus. There is no god here right now other than this guy. Nobody cares about the lives of prostitutes. We're becoming Jack. No. Is this going to go where I think it's going to go? Because this would be really cool if it's going to go the way I think it's going to go. You will find a young girl on the alley that you always buy something. You know what it is. Her name is Nina. She has short red hair. We can't kill her. Don't do that to Nina. Ginger's already have enough of an issue. Hey, I like making the stories more interesting. And she is a virgin. This is going to be her first and last night she does her job. You will recognize her when you see her. You won't need to hide anything after you sacrifice her to me, as you will be above all the law of humans. Deal or I am going to, I am not going to murder anyone. Already seeing the one, so here we go. Shaking hands with a demon. I know you possess Alexander's sword and keep it in the basement alongside with your wine bottles. I want you to kill Nina with it. Go get to your car. I am waiting. Always make the deal with the devil. Go to your garage. So you leave your study room, descend the staircase, and go to your garage where you keep your expensive cars. You are a sports car. You have a sports car with its distinctive red color, and another black car that looks like a vigilante with a bat cost, like a vigilante with a bat costume would drive. Apparently, we have the Batmobile. That is amazing. You can choose one of them to bring the prostitute to your mansion. We're going, we're going with the Batmobile? I'm down with that. Let's go Batmobile. Because I'm Batman. So you get in your black car and drive to the alley that you always find your thing. We won't name here. Six. Despite the high horsepower of your car, you drive slowly in order to examine the people in the alley. The alley is almost isolated. You see only a few people. You know that they don't sell legal things. And you see the silhouette of a girl with a, very sh with a very short skirt and long legs. Clearly a prostitute. She smokes a cigarette, but she coughs with every breath she takes. As you approach her, you see that she has a red you see that she has red hair, just like the crystal skull described. She notices your car. So do we sound the horn or wait for her to approach the car? I think we wait. Sounding the horn would, I think, give off... That just alerts everybody. And everybody's like, oh, hey, look at that guy in his car. If we're going to do this, because we essentially set our game plan into doing this, we kind of just have to wait for her. She approaches your black car's window. She looks quite young and naive and cute. But you are here for something else. Um, excuse me, sir. She shyly talks to you. I believe that you seek some fun, don't you? Oh, Lord, this is... Awkward. One, play it smooth. Oh, I like that. What is this? Amateur hour? Who doesn't? That's good. I can give you what you want for 40 euros. Get in the car or deal. We said deal already once. <laughs> Going with the deal. Done deal. She gets in your car and sits on the seat next to you. As you start your car, she asks, 
Will you bring me back here after the job is done? I'm not that experienced, to be honest. Oh, do we lie to her? Oh, do we lie to her? Okay. Yes, I will. She smiles. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I don't feel right about this now. <laughs> You're about to arrive at the mansion. Oh, do we start asking her questions? I feel like number one might be a necessity. One deal. Doesn't matter. All names are the same. You can call me anything, but please let it be a girl's name. Uh, oh, I feel like pressing three, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at this point. I'm corrupting him. <laughs> oh, God. This, this might be the toughest one. This might be the toughest decision. Because if we pick one, then I feel like everything gets thrown out the window. Uh, with the elder god that we were talking to. This is your choice. I'm going three then if this one's mine. The girl is shocked. Oh, how do you know my name? Well, one or two. You wouldn't believe me? Never mind. Or Crystal Skull told me about you. And uh, legitimately, if I said number two, she wouldn't believe me. So I'm on number one. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, ne never mind. Never mind. Three or four. Do we ask her why she does it? Or do we just let things be and just... We just get go on to, uh... You know. Ugh. This is... This one's really making you feel... The last one, like, we were just along for the ride. I feel this one's much more. Well, three, I think we'll either screw it up or learn backstory. So three. Okay. Oh, no. Literally, I didn't even read all that initially. I just read the first sentence of that. And I already don't like it. Oh, no. My dad is in jail. He's in a huge debt. This is the quickest way I can earn money to help him. <laughs> Do we really want to be a god? Do we really want to be a god? This is... This is... Mm. So you finally arrive at your mansion. You stop the car and get off. As she gets off, she looks at your mansion with awe. Wow, it looks so pretty. It must be wonderful to live here. She follows you as you walk to the mansion and open the door. The sword is in the basement. Oh, you wanna... Jaren, you're, you're... Oh, man, you're making me feel even worse about this because you're just being the pure... Just, we're gonna make this happen type of guy. Oop. Muted it instead of clicking one. <laughs> I'm evil. Uh, let me show you something more interesting. You look like a man with surprises and mystery. I love it. I wonder how this night will end. Oh, Lord. If only she knew. 
chaotic evil. Me too. You open the door that leads to the basement stairs. You turn on the lights and descend as the girl follows you. You walk past the wine casks. I'm sure that you have a good taste of wine, or I'm sure you have a good taste of wine, she says. You had hidden Alexander's sword between two casks. Now you find and pull it from the spot you hid it. You stand between her and the basement's door, so she can't escape from you. God, I, I'm hiccuping. This story is playing on the emotions. Can't handle this right now. Wow, that sword looks antique. Who used to own it? Uh, I was going to murder you, but I can't. <laughs> Like that. I like that he's just like, yeah, uh, I can't. Okay. Alexander the Great. Ah, is this the sword he cut the Gordian knot with? I know this story. Well, she seems to know some history, though. He became the king because he thought outside the box. He cut the knot instead of solving it by hand. I always wanted to be someone great like him, but I ended up being a prostitute. Oh lord, you will be great. After I sacrifice you, or, uh, I was going to murder you. But I can't. <laughs> I like that number two... My favorite part of it, though, is uh, they decided to add the I was going to murder you. I feel like it would have been more effective if it was just, but I can't. Well, now it's the choice murder and become God or not and die by skull. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to kill the main character or let him become a God? You got you got a big decision, John. You put him in this mess. You put him in a position and myself to some degree where... My emotions have just been untied. We learned backstory of Nina. We learned that her father is in prison with a huge debt, and she's just trying to pay it off. You know what? Two. I can't. Jarn, you, you, you actually spared her life. <laughs> to the main character. Uh. I was going to murder you, but I can't. Plus, I got a soft spot for redheads. Jarn, good man. Good man. I'm there with you on that part. You say, uh, I was going to murder you, but I can't. But you can't control your words. Because you start to lose control of your body. You fall on the floor. Paralyzed, the sword falls with you as you can no longer hold it. Then you feel that something takes over your body. You stand up and pick the sword without pick up the sword without your consent. You hold the sword so that its tip is in your belly. The position of Harakari. Harakiri? Yeah, Harakiri. I know what this is. We're doing the honorable samurai death. That sound effect made me jump. I was not expecting that. You stab the sword into your abdomen and fall to your knees. The prostitute screams as you keep pulling and pushing the sword into your body till you fall on the floor. You gain control of your body once again, but it's too late. The stabs are too deep and there is nothing you can do but wait for death to come. And it comes before she could get help. The end. The game has four endings. So this one has four different endings. Interesting. So back to the title screen we are. Um, at this point... We got time for, I think, about maybe two more. 
Well, so far I've killed a billionaire and a king. Yep. Uh. So, uh, so far, it looks like we're going to be able to get at least two more done here before I really call it close to the stream. Maybe we'll go for three if I feel, uh, if I feel frisky enough to do it. Which one are we going for next? We've done the two crystal skulls, which I, I will say, I enjoyed the second one more than the first, solely because we got a little more backstory with some characters out of that second one. Well, which one are we thinking now? The doll, uh, after funeral, evil beneath the ground, madness in infinite loop, or Ouija? With the vampiric teeth right here to, uh, to give you a pretty feeling. Ouija? Okay. We will go with Ouija. You are a single father. Your wife, Linda, passed away while giving birth to your son a year ago. You will be able to use a Ouija board and contact, contact and have contact with an entity who claims to be Linda in this story. Okay. Fun fact. I do not like Ouija boards. They're one of the few things, I'm not overly superstitious, I'm not skeptic either. I'm like in that middle ground where just nothing's happened to me. I feel like it's legit, like it could. I, just, I do not like Ouija boards. Freak me the hell out, and they're the one thing that I think could be legitimately legit. And I just don't ever like taking chances. There are two stories in here that I don't like solely because they're just things I don't like. You got Ouija... And you got the doll. I'm not a big fan of dolls. They, those are the two things I really don't like. That's mainly porcelain dolls and those creepy ass realistic baby dolls. But I wouldn't say I hate Ouija the most. I'd say dolls are probably creepier to me. Just I, it, they were unnerving. Ouija boards are increasingly unnerving to me. Like I'd never use one. Doll is next then. So we're finishing up with doll. That's great. Ouija. Not to be confused with the movie. That was terrible, according to all reviews. New Jersey, 1981. You are a single father. Your wife Linda passed away a year ago at childbirth. Your son's name is Mark. Well, hi, Mark. He's a cute baby with blue eyes that he got from his mother. As expected, you are in agony with the loss of your wife. Mark is the only thing that you hold on to. All that matters. Oh, no. I'm already like five steps ahead thinking about how this is going to end. and I don't like that that's a main priority in this story. You have been in love with Linda since the first time you saw her. She was so pretty. You wanted to be with her forever. It still surprises you. It still surprises you to have such a charming woman fall in love with you. During Linda's pregnancy, you lost your job at some point while having debt. Well, having incredible debt, I would assume. She supported you in every way she could. Not only, not only was she your wife, but she was also your best friend. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to... Uh, read over this a bit I think oh my god really we're getting that in uh, that's just it unnerving time to put that in you found another job after Mark was born and Linda died but of course doesn't make you a happy man when you've lost your best friend and wife looking in Mark's blue eyes gives you all the strength to go on as a single father you see the future in his eyes and the past the past when you were happy with your family, despite everything falling apart. You would lose everything if you lost Mark. Another reason that, another reason what made Linda and Mark so significant is you had lost your parents too. Basically, you had no family members left except for your son. Nobody to consult, 
for things that you need to talk with a family member about. Linda's parents, you don't see those assholes anymore. They have done wrong to you and Linda. That's not good. It's a foggy morning. You are, ta you are taking a walk in an isolated green forest, which is close to the suburb you live. Well, that sounds quite comforting. You can't see anything but fog beyond five meters. There's a single path, and you, are wa and you are walking it. You know that the path leads to a lake. You have been there countless times. Sounds quite like a pleasant little area. There is nobody else you can see here in the forest. But somehow... You feel that something awaits for you at the end of the path. You're gonna keep walking. You reach a lake, and you encounter a woman who looks uncannily familiar, standing at the side of the lake. She's turning her back. She has her back turned to you. You see that she has blonde hair and a black dress. So familiar. She slowly turns back and faces you with a smile on her beautiful face. She is no, she is nobody but Linda, completely alive. Did you miss me, darling? Well, we, we've already hit a point I didn't expect. Linda, is that you? Yes, it's me. I mean, I got many, a, many a question here. I feel like we gotta go with how is this possible. All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. What is this, the beginning of Kingdom Hearts? Am I getting a Keyblade right now? I would love that. She holds your hands. Buy a Ouija board. I will talk to you through that. You know what a Ouija board is, pronounced Ouija or Ouija. It is the board with letters and numbers on it, and you use it to talk with spirits, otherwise known as a spirit board. A strong wind starts blowing. In the blink of an eye, her flesh turns into ashes. The harsh wind carries the black ashes away, leaving a grim skeleton standing with you. You find yourself holding the hands of a skeleton who looks into your very soul with carved eyes on her skull. You wake up. It was a dream. A repeating one. You keep having this dream every night. It started a few days ago. It's a Monday morning now and you are in your bedroom. It's winter, but still sunny. After getting out of the bed, you take a look at yourself in the mirror, Hank. In the mirror hanged on the wall. You look worn out. We're gonna check on our baby boy Mark. Your house has two stories. The bedrooms are at the upper one. You walk into Mark's bedroom, which is next to yours, trying not to make a sound. You slowly open the wooden door of the bedroom. Your son sleeps peacefully in his cradle. You would not expect a one-year-old to make noises all the time. You would expect a one-year-old to make noises all the time, but Mark is not such a boy. He rarely cried. He's been a happy boy. Good for Mark. The bedroom's walls are painted in a... Yeah, painted in a calming tone of blue. Good color choice. A circle of toys are hanged upon the cradle. Cute figures of a lion, sun, red cat, moon, are the parts of this instrument. So a mobile, or mobile, however you want to call it. There is a big poster of a yellow big bird on the wall. He's got big bird on his wall. You change Mark's diapers, like you always do in the morning. Okay, the random sound effects, combined with the music I'm playing, are really legitimately catching me off guard. Because at first I was like, why? How'd the doorbell ring? I give it to not only myself for choosing this music and Miu for being phenomenal at, his jo at making music. But give it to this game for, time for having these very well done random sound effects.
Yeah, I, I will say I love, I loved coming up with this idea to add this music in the background. It is helping so much with this. After you complete changing the diapers, the doorbell rings. It's probably the caretaker, Isabel. She comes every morning at this hour. You go downstairs and open the door. Good morning, sir, says Isabel. She is a woman in her 20s with curly black hair and brown eyes. She steps into your home. Your daily routine starts with making the breakfast while Isabel takes care of Mark. You get to work after the breakfast unless it's the weekend. Isabel walks into the kitchen, opens the fridge, and picks up the formulated milk for babies without mothers. Talk about the dreams or don't talk about the dreams. Oh god. Ooh. Song of healing in this moment? Hmm. When we're talking about healing, maybe we, if the song of healing pops on, maybe we should talk about the dreams. Well, we're talking about the dreams then. Before Isabel leaves the kitchen, you tell her everything you see in these recurring dreams and how Linda asks you to use a Ouija board to communicate with her. It's easy to see how surprised Isabel is. Sir, don't do that. It is too dangerous. You shouldn't mess with the dead. Isabel's smart, I'm just saying. Isabel climbs up the stairs to take care of Mark. You are hungry. You need to make breakfast. You like listening to music on the radio while making breakfast. Will you turn on the radio today? Do I turn on the radio or do I make breakfast without music? We're going to meet with a terrible fate, aren't we? Probably. Okay, let's turn on the radio. No music. I was I was wondering if music was going to play. <laughs> you turn on the radio. The song playing is Sunny from Bonnie M. Or Boney M. Sunny, yesterday my life was... I don't know the song, so I'm not going to be able to sing it. Sunny, yesterday my life was filled with rain. Sunny, you smiled at me and really eased the pain. The dark days are gone and the bright days are here. My sunny one shines so sincere. Sunny one so true. I love you. Do not know. I'm going to have to look up that song. Then maybe next time we go through this, then I'll, I'll actually be able to sing it. You like that song. It kind of reminds you of the happy times you had with Linda. You make yourself an omelet and a half cup of co hot cup of coffee. That's your daily routine. Mmm, delicious. After you finish the breakfast, it's time to leave the house. Will you buy a Ouija board? You can go to a toy store to buy it before going to work. Or you can refuse to buy it, thus refusing to contact what you see in your dreams. Jaren, just put it in the chair because I know what you're going to do. Yep. Despite it being a winter day, it's not cold outside. There is a toy store you know. This is where you buy Mark's toys. You remember seeing a Ouija board there. That's one thing I never understood before we get back to the story. I never understood the fact that the Ouija board, with what it's, you know, utilized for and perceived to be able to do, it's a child's toy, essentially, made by Parker Brothers, the same people who make board games. I will never understand that. It doesn't take long to reach the store. You enter the store and start searching for the board among all the colorful toys. You find a box that looks quite different from the others, from the other toys. It doesn't look cute, not something you'd buy for your kid. It's a grim looking Ouija board. And of course, we came in here to buy it. We're buying it. You pick up the box of you pick up the box with the Ouija board and move to the cash point. You move to the cashier. Or checkout. The cashier is a brunette young woman. Ooh. <laughs> she gets surprised to see the box. Ah, you want to buy that? What will you use it for, if I may ask? Ooh. All two be an asshole. 
I love that. This guy seems such a nice guy. He's a single father. I think it's none of your business. She frowns. Aw, we made her sad. Okay. I had to warn you. I wouldn't bring... It won't bring good. Don't use it by yourself, at least. And never ask when or how someone will die. Wait a minute. Is she speaking from experience here? So you pay the board's price and buy it. You put it in a plastic bag with the logo of the toy store and go to your office. As an accountant, you think that you have a dull job. Nothing interesting happens during the week. During the work, you had no friends to talk to. Dear Lord. After the shift ends, you are ready to go home. Darkness has fallen. Oh dear Lord, really? This song is playing when we are a single father with a child. Come on. Knowing Isabel is at home, you ring the bell when you arrive home. Welcome, she says with a smile after opening the door. Her shift ends when you come home. She got ready to head off. Mark is sleeping peacefully. He has just started sleeping, Isabel says before leaving the house. You can ask her to assist you in the seance. Hey, Isabel, you want to join? Sorry, I can't do that. You mustn't either. Isabel leaves. You are alone with Mark now. Before starting the seance, you climb the stairs and check on Mark. He looks so happy and peaceful while sleeping. You close the door and descend the stairs. You will use the board in your living room. There's a table you can use there. You had heard that it's best to turn off the lights before talking to a Ouija board, so you can get a candle from the kitchen and light it. Then you turn off the lamps, so the only thing that enlightens the room is the candle. You pull the wooden board from its box and place it on the table. Then you get the planchette, the wooden part of which you will put your finger on. The summoned entity is supposed to move the planchette when your finger is on it. Are you ready? I am ready. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to put my mouse right here. Just to see. Just to see. That's weird. That is so weird. Okay. For the stream, since I had to kind of stretch everything out, for some reason the mouse has to be in a different spot on my screen than yours. It's real weird. Linda. 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 Linda? Linda? Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh! Jarn, what did you do? I don't like this. This is just a, a game. Made for entertainment purposes. And I have to virtually use a Ouija board. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Okay. Oh, are you really Linda? Oh wow, I like that you actually can't press these. You have to go over them. It's going to look a little different on your screen where my mouse is, so I apologize for that. Are you really Linda? Oh, it's saying yes. Did nothing. I'm innocent. I don't think you're innocent. 
sucked. I blame you for everything. Oh yeah, where are we going to now? Go down the order? Yep. Will I bring Mark up well? No! Are you watching us from there? Apparently, yes. What do you want to tell me? <coughs> Why I the A? Oh, that's, that's ter that's a genius mechanic. That is a genius mechanic. You literally have, you literally have to keep your mouse on the planchette. That is a great mechanic. Yivamo? What does that mean? Uh. I, I don't know what to go with now. I think we need to we need to test this. When did we get married? Okay. Okay. What was your favorite color? I admit I'm creeped. Yeah. Why did you return? What do, what does moon mean? What does moon mean? Can't type. That's what it means. What do you want from me? Are you peaceful? Oh! If this is the moon again... D... I... D... Did not. Okay. Okay. Okay, don't meet new people. Gotcha. Ain't gonna do that. Nope, nope, not gonna do that. Why would I do that?
I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Why are you restless? Thud. Moon again. Hold on. I just want to point out that sound you're hearing. It, it's the game. That was not music. That wind stuff was not music. Which kind of freaked me out for a second. Because I was like, what in the world's up with my music? Okay. Something about the moon, man. Oh no. Oh no. Might as well ask this one. And oh, it's gonna say never. It's I already knew. I already knew. Well, that's uh. Okay. Do we just say goodbye or do we ask questions we should not ask? I think we're, we're probably going to end the stream with this story. Just going to say that right now. Because I don't think we'll have, the t we'll have time to, uh, to do doll. I don't know. I may push it to do doll as the final one. But death questions. Oh, Lord. Uh, we'll start with a fun one. How will I die? Oh! Oh! Oh, this is... Oh, no. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm, nope. 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 Okay, win. You win. Okay. Oh, I really don't like this at all, man. This is legitimately uncomfortable. Oh no, I know exactly how this is going to happen. Oh, and I know exactly what you're going to say. Oh, I know exactly what this is going to say. What? Never mind. Wait. We're going to keep, I'm, I'm legitimately, to some extent, curious of this now. So that's why I'm asking these questions more so than the fact that they, the moon, the moon, what is up with the moon? Why the moon? I don't get the moon. I don't understand the moon. Goodbye. See ya. Bye bye. What, 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 what did, did, go, go, go down, go, go. If you ever wanted something to clip, that whole section, maybe not all of it, but a good chunk of that section is exactly what you want to clip from this stream. 
and there you go you've got your first you got a clip of me being legitimately terrified because that was the most unsettled i may have ever been in a horror game i legitimately didn't like that i legitimately did not like that i have a terrible shiver down the back of my spine uh Uh, and the planchette throws itself. It flies to the window of the living room, breaking it. You hear the radio in the... You hear the radio in the kitchen starting to play. Something turned it on. It plays a sinister voice that laughs. Laughter of a clown. It doesn't stop. You feel it mocking you. Ah. Oh. One or two, hurry up and pick, please. Oh god, this is so unsettling. Uh, two. As you climb the stairs, you hear Mark crying in his room. That's certainly not good. Oh god, it's still- the laughing's still there. You frantically try to open the door of Mark's room. It's locked. The door- the door is not broken yet. You hear the muffled scream of Mark. Kick the door again. The door is not broken yet. You hear the muffled scream of Mark. Kick it. Kick it. The door is not broken yet. The screams stop. The door is broken. You rush to Mark's cradle. His pillow covers his face. It's apparent that he was choked. Mark's shown us no sign of life. He's dead. You cry in despair. You were warned not to use the Ouija board. Now you are alone with your remorse. Soon you call 911. Nobody believes that Mark was killed by a supernatural entity. All the all the proof shows that Mark was killed by his father. You get arrested. I, you kinda did. Kinda jarring. Just kinda. Time flies fast and nothing gets better. You get sentenced to life for killing your son. You'll spend the rest of your life alone in a cell. Well, you might have a roommate. That's not gonna end well though. And that's how your psychological problems start. You find yourself thinking about morbid matters, like the rotten corpses of Linda and Mark, or what Mark has seen while it choked what Mark had seen while it choked him to death, or how the guardians would react if they find you find you would have hung yourself. Sometimes you start laughing hysterically, but there is nothing funny to laugh at. Sometimes you throw wild tantrums, screaming with anger between the four walls of your cell. Are you going mad, or is it taking you over? There is no difference, honestly. During the fifth year of your imprisonment, you decide to end the dire suffering, and you succeed. The end. The story has three endings. Oh. That one's the worst one so far. That, and by worst, I mean most terrifying. That's the creepiest one we've gone through so far, and I don't think anything's going to beat that. That one legitimately made me uncomfortable. Oh. That one... Like, I may have nightmares from that one. That one is... who? Well... I technically do have some time left. And you know what? Even though I gotta be up early in the morning to record uh, some other stuff... It, it's tough for me not to finish on on that one because it was so good... But I feel like since I really don't like, I do not like dolls, I think we're going to go with it. Might as well. Oh, there are hints to this one. 
You're a single mother. We went from a single father to a single mother. Your daughter, Lisa, is an intelligent girl who doesn't have any friends. Aw. You buy her a rag doll. Soon, Lisa will claim that the doll can talk and... This is just the beginning of your nightmare. Can the doll be really, pos really be possessed, as L Lisa claims? If you are stuck, you can see our Facebook post about how to get the good ending in this story. There's a good ending in this story somewhere. The doll. As a single mother, you know how hard it is to look after a 13-year-old girl. Hard, but still joyful. Her presence gives you all the strength you need. Her name is Lisa. She is a shy girl. She doesn't talk much. You got divorced three years ago because he cheated on you with his secretary. Ain't that always it? Lisa misses her father, but you don't allow her to see him. She adores her father, but you think he is an asshole. Lisa is a special kid. Her teacher once said that she is too intelligent for a girl her age, but you already knew that. Her reactions are unexpectedly mature. She is also hardworking. You expect perfection from her. Her teacher told you that you must take Lisa to a psychiatrist, and you will do it soon. Lisa is a lonely girl, maybe because she doesn't talk much. You think that she needs friends, so you bought her a rag doll to cease her loneliness. You bought the rag doll from a local toy store, not an expensive toy, nothing too fancy. Lisa might still like it. You know the you know that expense doesn't make Lisa happier. The doll is a girl is a girl with big blue eyes and curly black hair. She has a wide grin that you can call friendly. Her dress is red, matching her shoes. She also has eyebrows. The unnamed doll waits for her new owner in Waits for her new owner in her bedroom. You haven't brought Lisa home from school yet. So, uh, I guarantee this is going to be somewhat like Annabelle. Seeing that it's a rag doll, it's possessed. I get, we're probably going to get a bit of the Annabelle situation here. It's Friday. Not a sunny day. The sky is covered with gray clouds. You are driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seatbelts are worn tight. She looks from the window blankly, without any expression on her face. You remember that the math exam results were going to be announced today. Okay. How are the exam results? Lisa sighs and says, Terrible. I'm the seventh in the class, not first like the previous exam. I know you will be mad at me. I didn't study enough. Are we the are we the parent that kind of gets really upset that they didn't study a lot? Oh, good on you, Jaren. I like that. I like that we're being supportive here of our child. It's okay, darling. She looks at you with a slight surprise. You always scolded her whenever she wasn't the best. Now you say it's okay, darling. She continues watching the cars passing by. Whew. Sorry, it's getting late here. It's 11 o'clock. We've been going two hours and, you know, telling stories gets you a little bit tired. You're driving your car. At least uh, we already know that. So two or three. Which track's this? Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Two? Okay. Were you able to make any friends today? No, she says with a determined voice. They're all just idiots. For example, they see the other classes in the school as enemies, as if they were an enemy nation with a different religion. I mean, is it still silly to be enemies because of race or religion? Man. She, she's modern. She, she's quite mature for her age. These morons in my class hate each other just because they are different classes. I mean, it makes kind of sense. 
It's like sports. Hmm. Do we spoil the surprise of the ragdoll or do we keep driving? Oh, we're not going to spoil the surprise. Okay. You finally arrive home. The doll is in your bedroom, Lisa, you tell her. She climbs up the stairs slowly. Apparently, she isn't so excited about the doll. You follow her to her bedroom. She picks up the doll that's on her bed. I will think of a nice name, Lisa says, but I have got homework to do first. Play comes after study. <laughs> Damn, man, we just were tired you out. I think, I think that one just took a lot out of me. It's the fact that you have a single father with his child. The child, Like that one, it wasn't as emotional as the second one we covered with the backstory, but that, that Ouija board got to me. It got to me. So uh, don't go too hard on yourself. So you leave Lisa alone in her room. You have a, you've got a lot of work to do anyways. Not only you, not only will you cook, but you also need to work on a novel cover illustration as a freelance artist. Hey, I'm not a freelance artist. Novels, I know. The deadline is close, so you work hard. So you work hard nowadays. You work all day. The only break you take is the de is for dinner. You don't talk about anything during dinner, Lisa. Oh man, it's 11 or no, it's 10 o'clock. Bedtime for Lisa. I was about to say, I'm like, wait a minute. No, it's 11 here, just about. It's 10 o'clock, bedtime for Lisa. You visit Lisa before she sleeps. She's in her pink dotted pajamas. She's holding the doll in her arms. Hey, that's good to see. Mom, I'm going to tell you something, but you won't believe. After a few seconds of silence, she speaks. The doll can speak. She told me her name is Anna. Who called it? We got an Annabelle situation. What? That's impossible. Lisa explains. Anna says she was nothing but a piece of light. A light that's drifting in absolute blackness. A weak light in the infinite darkness. Then she found life in this doll. She was waiting in the toy store for a friend. Lonely. And today, she found me. She says that she loves me. <laughs> yeah, um. Okay, we'll go four. And what did you tell her? Lisa smiles. And I said that I will be her new friend and I will always love her. She continues. And then she told me that she was happy. Happy like the times when she used to be an angel. Oh no. She's gonna brainwash our daughter. Uh, do, 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 do. She seems really happy about this. Oh, uh, okay. We'll go with it. I believe in you. Keep the doll. Lisa doesn't show her emotions usually, but this time you can see that she is surprised. Oh, thank you very much, Mom, she says. You kiss her goodnight and leave her with Anna the doll. Because of all the hard work, you begin to feel tired and you go to bed. It doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. A few hours later, you wake up to the sounds coming from the outside. You hear hysterical laughters. Come on, not again. <laughs> coming from the garden. They belong to a girl. Specifically, Lisa's. If you're telling me that what is happening is we look outside the window, she's standing there, and she's laughing. 
with no one, I'm done. You stand up and look outside the window. You see Lisa standing and laughing in the garden under the pale moonlight. She is facing bl- she is facing with her back towards you. You can't see her face. If I'm looking out my window and I see someone, even somebody I know, doing that, I'm done. I'm walking. I'm leaving. Goodbye. See you later. Just saying. Go to the garden. You climb down nervously. You wear your shoes and walk to the garden. Lisa doesn't react to your presence. You approach Lisa and put your hand on her shoulder. She turns her face to you. It is not Lisa's face. It is not even a human face. The texture of the face is a gray rag. The eyes are quite big for a human. So is the wide smile. The voice changes. It doesn't belong to a girl now, but a demon. She stares at you and laughs. You wake up. It was just a nightmare. God, I will give it to the music. It is on point right now. You are all sweaty with terror. The morning has already broken. You decide to check on Lisa. Lisa is sleeping peacefully, hugging Anna. And it is carrying that wide smile that annoys you now. But hey, it is normal. It would be terrible if the doll's face was different than how you bought it. You go to the kitchen to prepare a weekend breakfast. You usually make an omelet with sausage on Saturdays. You will repeat that habit today. I will say, she must be very similar to the single father. Uh, he made an omelet. You're in the kitchen. You take the sausage and eggs from the fridge. You need it to slice the sausage, so you open the drawer to pick up the meat knife. Something is wrong. The knife isn't there. Hop. Uh, What's the likelihood that it's in the garbage? You couldn't find the knife inside the garbage bin. You searched the knife. You searched for the knife everywhere possible, but it's in vain. So you decide to use another knife to prepare the omelet. After you've prepared the omelet, Lisa wakes up and joins you in the kitchen. Dear Lord, I am yawning so much right now. That Ouija, Ouija took it all out of me, apparently. It absorbed everything out of me. You eat the breakfast with her. She doesn't look so happy. There's an uneasiness on her face. Did she read the last story too? Meat knife is missing. Did Anna speak again? You have to study today. No play. Okay, so we're going to. Did Anna speak again? She did not speak today, but she kept changing her facial expression. Sometimes she looked so happy, sometimes not. She was frowning. There was anger in her face. I can't understand her. Lisa continues eating the breakfast. You eat the breakfast with her. She doesn't look so happy. There's an uneasiness on her face. I feel like the meat knife really isn't something we need to ask. But I feel like it's something we, like, I don't think a parent would really ask their kid, hey, all no, the meat knife's missing. But we'll do it anyways. It is strange, Mom. I have no idea where the meat, where the knife went. Wow, so much for that. Nice job, Lisa. You didn't help me at all with my problems. You know how important that knife is? Pretty important. Just saying. Oh, so she doesn't get to play? That's disappointing. Okay, you have to stay today. No play. Lisa sighed. This is Saturday. 
Okay, Mom. I'll work hard and be better. Then she looked away. She might be hiding her thoughts. She was not such a vocal girl. Here we go. The breakfast is over. I need to study math, says Lisa, then climbs up to her room. You also need to work on the novel cover. You're both busy now. It is evening. As you work on the cover, you hear screams from Lisa's room. You rush to her room. You find Lisa standing and breathing in panic. Her arms are full of stitches. She did it, Lisa screams, showing her heavily wounded arms as blood leaks down to the floor. She jumped and ran away. Lisa points to the open window. What the hell happened? You look outside. You can't see any running dolls there. Maybe because she ran away or it is too dark outside. Or Lisa is lying. Okay. I might make an executive decision on this one because I don't think we're slapping her. She's literally bleeding out of her arm right now. We're going number one here. There's no way we're slapping her. You crouch and hug Lisa. As she cries, I know how hard it is to believe me now. Thank you for believing me. But please, I want to stay alone. I know... I know that she won't come back. She knows. I'm nice. Sometimes. Jarn, you, you have been pretty good this this story. You've been... You, as the single mother, you're very kind. <laughs> so you let her stay alone in her room. After closing the windows and locking the door. Dear Lord. You make sure that no doll can trespass. You get into your own bedroom next to Lisa's room so you can hear her in, in case she needs you. It's 3 a.m. now. It's raining outside. Lightning strikes and enlightens your dark bedroom. You haven't slept. You don't care about the freelance work you got. All these events make you too stressed to care about business. You see Lisa's silhouette at the door. She walks in. Lisa is holding something behind her back. You can't see it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. She's a tool. She has been brainwashed. She is a now a puppet of a puppet. Come on. She approaches your bed, climbs it, and comes near you. With a sudden move, she stabs the meat knife in your belly. She stabs you once again. You didn't allow me to live my childhood. She keeps stabbing your body with insanity. Death to the main character. So she... I hate you, Mom. I hate you. These are the final words you hear as your own daughter repeatedly stabs you and commits martis matricide. The end. There are two possible endings. There is only one other ending to this one. Wow. I'm not sure I know what the uh, possible ending to this. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect that ending. That caught me off guard. I thought the doll was going to be the one to kill us. I thought she was being utilized like a puppet or something. That is the only ending that legitimately caught me off guard. Prop toss her out. Yeah, probably to some extent. I don't know. There's, there's a couple of things that I think could lead to the good ending, but I'm so unsure. But that, uh, that's all we're going to do for now. We've gone for a little over two hours. 
I'm a little, I'm still a little shaken up after Ouija. And we gotta go through Ouija again at some point uh, to get, you know, all the endings for that one. Woo! I will say, I went into this thinking these were gonna be very subpar. That these were gonna be stuff that, you know, it's like, oh, that's not bad, but it's, it's not that great. I'll give it to him. The doll, not amazing, in my opinion. I think that's been a uh, oh, sweet Ouija nightmares. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to totally be coming. I'll say, though, doll was my least favorite of all of them. I feel like that one was the most lackluster. And Crystal Skull comes after that for the ones that we've done. Crystal Skull 2, I think, was pretty good. You got the backstory there. Get you emotionally attached a bit. But Ouija was great. I legitimately felt uneasy with Ouija. That one was really good. I felt that one went in depth enough to make you really care about it. Before we head out, which one of those was your favorite? Which one of those? Whether you're watching this, you might be watching it video on demand on YouTube. If you are, let me know in the comments. But uh, here in the chat, uh, Jaren, let me know which one was your favorite, man. So I gotta say, Ouija. Yeah, Ouija was your favorite too, yeah. So, uh, I don't know when the next time I'll stream this is, because I'm not going to stream any next week, with it being Christmas weekend, with it being Christmas coming up and all that. I won't have the time and family will be up, but... I am excited to stream this again. This really... really got me hyped. I am overly excited for the next stream of this. Interactive Horror Stories. This is free on Steam, if you were wondering. This is free. Anybody can play it. I highly recommend this, actually. I didn't expect that. Yeah, this was pretty fun. Other than the broken English, which, you know, you expect. This was a fun, fun game. So, once again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed, of course. Uh, whether you're watching this on playback or not. Uh, you know, YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, of course, here on Twitch, follow. And, essentially, that's it. I will see you guys uh, with the next stream. I hope you enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, I am. I don't know what I'm going to be streaming next. It will probably be something tomorrow midday or late that's about it it will either be midday i'll stream or late oh you'll know either on the community tab on youtube or on twitter so i will see you guys then